And every day since, I've been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Like so many weights. Yeah, you got the mod to prove it. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ooh. Hey, no, I, you, shut up. I'm the one who's... <laughs> I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed the guy? Yeah, um, why aren't the police called? Why are you, like, I'm, I'm happy that your dream is to become a chef. How are you still a student at this academy? You can't... <laughs> Where's your dish? Where's your dish? Hmm... I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh, forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. The sport monster is here to fight a hero? Van Van. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me? Just as I was letting down my guard, I know, I know, connected with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid, be very afraid of me, because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. <laughs> what will you do? Uh... Defend. Are you, are you going to attack me? You decide to defend. Which defense will you? Trepidation? Oh. You close your eyes tight, but then open one just enough to squint to see the sport monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what's to come next. The sport monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. That lot of good that lot of good that defense did. Oh, I I guess I really have to fight. You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love. I don't want to chow now. Cook with love does one damage. Sport monster won't forget this. Sport monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack. How will you attack? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Sport monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack again. Uses you, you, utility, tensile. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack. Cook with love. Is oozing cheese sauce on the lawn of the quad? I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, monster prepares for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. Vile villain! Your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Hot <laughs> pie power pinch! Oh my god. Oh my god! Pot power bench does 10 damage. Sport monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured sport monster spoof, spews steam into the night. Forget mercy. Finish him. Spare this wretched beast. I'll spare him. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is a living creature with a pure soul who deserves not who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast! Don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. <laughs> I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. Sport monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears to be a cookbook, but upon a closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and 
find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Borco? That name strange, sounds strangely familiar. I'm pretty sure that's the guy who could never say his name. Mm. Excuse me. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding a mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle bus, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away without any energy to keep your eyes open. Darkness overtakes you. <laughs> oh, this game. This is a treat. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. You dream of his... Sailor KFC to the rescue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his amazing goatee, his glasses, and his perfectly placed hair. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders, but for some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love dreams. Instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Oh my god. Oh my god. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories? Or premonitions? And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sa Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, so there's no save? That's okay. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the sport monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Pop. Aww. Aww. Like him? Like, like, like. I know, I, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We've got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders enlisted in the army when he was only three? Yeah, I don't think that's true. Not only that, but he founded a special unit of super soldiers who all wear the same hats just because he put on his hat one time and thought it looked cool. But Colonel Sanders doesn't even wear a hat. He wears a ribbon tie. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, you're a thing now? Whew. I'll take a drink. Oh my goodness. We definitely connected yesterday. I'm <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. Yeah, I'm great. I'm awesome. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Oh, no. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Dot, 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 dot. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering? That can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from a super duper rare dried flower petals. And if I ever did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. 
So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with him, later when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling overcame me. And the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyway, we know share we both share an interesting an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I'm the only one to know, I only know one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, 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 it would mean the world to me, no one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think you do? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share with your bestie? So the... <sighs> That's... I don't like either of these options at all. The first option is betraying the trust you built with Colonel Sanders. The second one is lying to your best friend, which you shouldn't do. You shouldn't do either of these. You should just be up front and be like, I... I am going to keep the secret and not share it. So we're going to make up a fake ingredient. You quickly think of a fake ingredient. I don't know. How about... Uh, it was Eye of Newt. I know. It sounds like some kind of witch's potions, but what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you'll figure that you've satisfied her curiosity, and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you were interrupted. Wind rushes, cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh no! It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school, and he arrives on a horse. On a horse. On a horse. Stand back and admire his majestic glory. Run to him. Um... Um... I don't want you to run to him. You could spook the horse. Stand back and admire him. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without ever acknowledging that he's ever that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. <laughs> you are so struck by the sight of him that you lose your ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment comp uh, compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What a horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. Dang it, that's what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, Wahali well, just get oh, Wahali well, just gets really nervous around people they like. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and were up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. She gives you a wink and a smile, and, and as if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sander disappears into the school, leaving you with Miriam, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. By the way that they're hiding. You know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipe bads. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Like summoning a demon bad. <laughs> you try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Uh, why don't you make like a bee and make find your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature. I mean, you're kind of acting immature right now. No, just tell them stop. You immediately dress the rivals down for 
You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior? Don't you mean a dress? I don't know. Culinary school is to be respected. Those, this kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You <gasps> make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creative... Uh, it takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. I don't think that's a good thing, though. You finally get a look at what they were hiding, and you instantly write it. It's a book just like the one you found after your encounter with the sport monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they have just been studying the book. They've got popped pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing, hee 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 hee. Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Ugh. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. No, don't be mean. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. He did, but I don't think Clank meant it. Psst. Womp. Oh. Clank looked mad. Ugh. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. <laughs> womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mix. Aww. Uh oh. Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van, sending him flying across the room. And now we have Iowans. Whoa. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either one of them. Ashley's tone is completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan? Just then, Sprinkle arrives... The to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town. And my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkle regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You went to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the, after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was the chicken who first signed their name. No, I don't think that's right. At all. But you can't help but do daydream about Colonel Sanders. And you miss out on most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Wahali, naturally this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you wish to sample? A glass of water, a dog biscuit, biscuit or a shimmering pepper? Oh, I don't want to eat the dog biscuit. I don't think you should sample water because it's just water. You use that to clean your palate. So I'm pretty sure you choose the pepper. Do you think we should choose the pepper? I think we should choose the pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from you. Stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. Oh, was there weed in the pepper? <laughs> the pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. Yeah, that was weed. It feels like this forever. It feels like forever as you trip through the unit. You even say you trip. My friend. Ooh. 
This guy again? I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my dad and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is cough, cough. I was saying to fulfill your destiny. All you must do is cough, cough. Sorry, I think I've got spice stuck down in my throat. It's fine. I'll work through cough to fulfill cough. The prophecy cough, cough. You must. You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh man. <laughs> you come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, and geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Someday. Come now, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. How is that? How is that pepper the last thing? <laughs> Alright, what's the dramatic announcement? Today's lunch will be prepared by... Via timed cook-off. Oh, you've got some cute poses, both of you. The level of theatrics, the, the level of theatrics with these two is off the chops. Demand they stop wasting everyone's time. Step them and tell them you're on. Yeah, let's go. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down, so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your grumption. Or your gumption, Wahali. I'll be wasting... I will be... I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll tell... He'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. And then he says... He says... Go to... The cooking arena. At least not until we turn on the timer. <laughs> Just then, timer ready. A huge light blasts you in the face saying, Lord's timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Aru! I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me. In, in, in case anyone was wondering, I hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. That's actually a really good saying. I just wish you weren't mean. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken and you've made mashed potatoes on day one. You're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. It always boils at 100 seconds after you turn the heat on. 100 degrees... Fahrenheit? That's wrong. Oh. What were you think, Wally? Get your game back, your head back in the game. Sure. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Eleven. I don't even have to read what it was. That's right, you might not know all of the ingredients, but at least you're headed in the right uh, direction. Tag weight, wag, ta tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Trust. That's wrong. I'm begging you, get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. I've never done it in a long time. It's never the one. Next question. Your classmates are ruling for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Where would a great time to be harnessed in? Uh, oh. Try again. Oh, do I have to go all the way back to it, though?
Okay. I'm gonna fast forward. Tell him you're on. Alright, I'm just fast forwarding. We'll be there. It's okay. Alright. Um, 100 degrees Celsius. That's boiling. That's right, but how would you have gotten into the school without knowing that? I'm sorry. Winter gets to rub my furry belly. Let's let that enticing offer motivate you. You're gonna need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know the exact recipe, but you have an idea. It takes 11. That's right. Alright. Uh... I guess gratitude? That's right. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you ever hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. Can you meditate and draw from that place? Uh, small town. That's right. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. Ah, You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What's the sign of the success? Sizzling. Wrong? Don't make me next question. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you. I believe in you, Wahale. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except he's watching you and which makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders on his horse. How many spoonfuls of gravy? What were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition. Er, you are stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. Oh no! <laughs> I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. <laughs> what does that have to do with spectac crafting spectacular fried chicken and uh, delicate baked biscuits? <laughs> You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Eh, uh, yikes. Psst. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance, utilize, fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but it, sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Brr. Might not have any hands, but Wahali does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's over mixed. Wahali, no! But you're not fast enough, your hands get stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. This is intense! There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. That's sad. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is the easiest way out. The way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me winner by default. No, no. It wouldn't be a fair com fair to compare the two of you on account of Wahali's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. <laughs> oh, well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to the dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find an array of delights taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells you a story of excellence. It actually does look pretty good. I was going to ask Wahali to do the honor, but since, you've in since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this depth cream. I'm afraid that pouring this creamier of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette, atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and a pearl of blueberry gel. Or, jelly. I don't know. Jeel? I 
I don't know. Hello. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places the sauce-covered finger into his lip, Ashley leans over and whispers, wh whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Put yourself between Ashley and... Colonel Sanders, or internalize the rage you feel. I don't think any of these are good. At all. Um. <sighs> what do you all think? What should I pick? That'll make it easier. What do you think I should pick? Which option one? Okay, internalize the rage you feel is option one. Put yourself between Sanders and Ashley is two. What do you two? What do you all think? Anybody? Gotcha, I guess, uh... I guess I'll put myself between them. You reach out with your apron to wipe off the sauce of his glistening face. Oh. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. <laughs> this goatee... This goatee isn't a fashion statement. It's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. Oh, so he's mad. Oh, try again. Ah, oh, This is annoying. Alright, pass you all. Step up and tell them you're on. Come on. Alright, come on. Here we go. Come on. Come on. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Celsius. Eleven. Eleven herbs and spices. Uh, gratitude. Um, a small town. Uh, silence. That's right, when they taste your cooking, they will be so taken with it that they will be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of your eye. I believe in you, Wahali. Yeah, I remember this. So basically, uh, over, yeah. Get your mind back on the competition. <laughs> Sorry, I'm skipping the scenes again. Oh, uh, that one. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah. You're really struggling to keep up. Yeah. Stuff in there. your hand. Alright, come on, hold on. Hmm. <gasps> Alright, internalize the rage you feel, evidently. Your rage burns so intensely with your eyes that they burst into flames. Oh, wow. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire, and turn to ash. They all fall off your face. They fall and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. 